All right, guys, so I'm 26 now. Um, last year, I had about 15, 16 grand saved up. Quit my job, went all in on my business, and a year later, I'm painting curbs <clears throat> to have enough money until my next paycheck so I can live and have groceries. Um, yeah, long story short, went all in on an online business. I lost everything, but we're not quitting. You know what I mean? Uh, it's um, trial, trial and error. And I'm gonna keep going. And hopefully I can look back on this video one day and say that, fuck, I'm glad I kept going. And I hope you guys keep going. Thanks, y'all. What's up, you guys? My name is Rai Reed. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't do it right, wait, wait. What's up, you guys? My name is Rai Reed. I had to get the drink. See that? Look at this. I'm drinking water now. I'm trying to convert over to drinking like a couple glasses of this per day. Strawberries in it. It's supposed to be extra refreshing. I'm not quite sure. I found that video, of course, on TikTok. His story is so doggone relatable. I feel like his story isn't just his story. A lot of celebrity stories, it's a lot of entrepreneurs, athletes, people who've made it from the bottom. Drake, start from the bottom, now we're here. Story is so many of us. Having an idea, believing in it, going in head first, and that idea not coming into fruition the way you thought it would have. There's so many things to debunk with that video, so I'm gonna start breaking some things down. First things first is go follow him on TikTok. I'm gonna put his um, TikTok information down below. I believe his name is C Wings. I'm probably butchering it. And also make sure you follow, like, share, subscribe, all that above. If you're interested in any of my books, they're down in the description box. They're available on Apple, Barnes and Noble. I'm trying to think, what else? Kobo, Amazon, I don't know, a couple places. You can buy my books. Back to the video. I went broke following my dreams. That was basically his whole testimony. What I like is, is that he wasn't afraid to go raw and go there. A lot of people won't show you how hard it is to become an entrepreneur. We like to see the good part. You know what I mean? We like to see the Lamborghinis, the McLarens, traveling on a boat with like 50 different models, buying the jewelry, buying the Rolexes, traveling, meeting celebrities, front row to whatever. We like those stories. But you can't have that story without having his story, which is the relatable one. That's where we all start off. I want to say this to that young man. You no, know, he's probably thinking like, I'm at the bottom, I'm 26. I'm out here, this is the struggle. He's not even finished yet. He's in a process of going to the next level. He has to start there before he gets to the next one. I like to think about entrepreneurship like this. Call it the molding process. Become a diamond. Let's just start with a diamond because everyone loves diamonds. I love diamonds, I'm wearing some. Like, who doesn't like diamonds? To become a diamond, like from a cold become a diamond, it has to endure heat and pressure and all those impurities within the coal have to be pressured and heated out to become a flawless diamond. No other way to get around that process. You might think maybe I can go just be in a cool puddle of water. Maybe I can chill in some mud. Maybe I can get some sunlight. No, the only way you're going to become a diamond is through pressure. You're going to be uncomfortable. It's going to hurt, it has to hurt. It's like if you've ever been in the gym, like last year I was really heavy about working out, I'm still in, but last year I was really heavy about lifting weights and doing barbells and bench press. So much pain like every single day, but that was what I needed to go through. Only way I was going to get stronger is through the tearing and ripping of muscles. I had to go through the pain and the aches I don't know about y'all, but if you've been in the gym, this is like your first time going to the gym and you start doing squats and like deadlifts and you start, you know, flexing and ab stuff for your first day. The next day in the morning, you can't get up. I swear I went to work after my first day of really doing like hardcore training with my older brother and my other brother. 
And I remember going to the restroom at work and I couldn't even like get up. I was stuck on the toilet, like, because I could not get up. My legs were dead. I had jelly legs for about two weeks. Like I probably, I probably was injured, it was so bad. I had to go through that to get the tone. I had to tone up my body. I had to get stronger. I had to go through the whole process. It hurt like hell. Even me going back to the gym after having jelly legs, I didn't want to be there. I remember telling my brother that I'm not gonna lift this 45 pound weight. Like I just forget it. I, give me the 20. Keep pushing me and pushing me to go five pounds heavier. Do an extra set, lift a little more. You're not done. One more push. It was always one of those. And I hated my brother. I hated him last year. I hated him through, through the whole entire pandemic. I hated that. Looking back now, I was my most ripped. There we go. All right, do five normal. I had to keep pushing myself and I had to keep enduring the pain to get my body in that physical peak. The same thing with him. It hurts like hell. I have to go through the process. Another thing they don't tell you about entrepreneurship, when you're first starting off or even when you do fail, either or, you have to work a job at McDonald's or CVS or like me. I was working, I had a couple jobs. I was working at a gym for um, the city. I was also flipping and slinging burritos on campus at um, the school I was at. And at night I was doing lift. So if you live in the Inland Empire in LA, you probably see me. I was out here lifting, picking up people, doing whatever I could to get enough money for my next book release or to market my book or to pay for ads or to even pay like a bookstore to just put my book on a shelf. I do what I had to do to continue on with my career. Nothing is too low for you. Thinking like, hey, I'm gonna become a rapper and I have to work at Burger King, so what? So what, we, we've all been there. You have to do what you have to do to promote your career. And it's not really about that, like the job, like the guy in the video who was painting curbs. People might think, oh, it's embarrassing that he was an entrepreneur, he started his own business and he failed. Now he has to be outside doing like, you know, laborious work, but it's not even that. He's using this method to pay for the thing that actually matters. That's how you have to look at it. Work at this job to pay for my dream. I have to work at this job or I have to do this thing to pay for my next marketing thing. I have to scrub this toilet in order for me to have enough money to print t-shirts to promote myself. All part of the journey and it's contributing. If I have to go to work, I don't really think about the job. I think, okay, I'm gonna use this paycheck and whatever money's left over, it's gonna go into my Facebook ad amount. Essentially, it's paying for my dream. It's paying for the thing that's eventually gonna make so much money that I don't even have to work that job anymore. Another talking point that I picked up from the video he was out there doing what he was doing alone. Like the biggest thing I kind of felt from watching the video is where was his friends? I'm sure he has his friends, I'm sure he has his family. Where were he, they when he was outside struggling and having to paint curbs and trying to get to the next? Like, where were these people when he needed them the most? But here we go, another talking point. When you're following your dreams, you're going to be doing it by yourself. I'm not saying you're not gonna have help or people aren't gonna come along the way. In the beginning, when you have a dream, it's your dream. This dream doesn't belong to your mother. It doesn't belong to your father. It doesn't belong to your cousin. It doesn't belong to your boyfriend, your girlfriend. It doesn't belong to your best friend. It doesn't belong to your dog. It doesn't belong to your neighbor, your grandpa. This is your dream. It was given to you, dwells inside of you, lives in you because it was meant for you. No one is going to be able to see your capability except for you because your capability will come to you in the form of your imagination. Maybe you're like me where you can sit back and envision yourself at your full potential in your career. Making what you wanna make, driving the car that you know you deserve, living in the home that was made for you. I'm not just saying like a whatever home, like imagine a mansion 
this home is huge it has all the amenities that you desire imagine yourself in this career at your absolute height maybe you're signing photographs maybe you're out and paparazzi are capturing you maybe your picture is on a billboard or you're in a commercial or you have that acting position that you've always wanted like maybe you're in the next fast and furious because they just don't stop making these movies <laughs> right like, think about it like that there's so many of those that's how entrepreneurship kind of works you can envision yourself being and doing and becoming that person you can see it i think that's like the blessing of having like the dream dream doesn't just come by itself it comes with the imagination part of it too you can see yourself becoming that person once you have that that's your motivation to keep you going and keep your dream alive when people start leaving and you don't get the support you actually want or deserve People don't show up to your events, don't call you and ask to help you or, you know, just anything. The worst part is like these people don't buy your stuff, or share your business with nobody, or tell none of their friends, they don't want to give you any of the connections and you're absolutely alone with this dream. Those moments when you are alone, you, your dream and your imagination, apply them all together, you will keep pushing through years and years and years i'll share a story with you guys many moons ago i had this impeccable dream like a vision came to me at the lowest moment in my life i saw myself signing books wearing a white collar shirt i'll never forget it signing these books and there were people all around me it was like a huge event and at that moment of my life, I was failing college. I was essentially broke. The car I was driving had no air conditioning. I had no air conditioning. And I lived in Cali, that mess is hot. Y'all don't understand. No air conditioning in Cali is crazy. Hardest moments of my life. I remember going to a gas station with a negative balance in my uh, my bank account. I had a negative, it was like seven or five dollars. I think it was five dollars. Credit cards were maxed out. And here I was driving to this gas station, trying to get gas for my little jacked up PT Cruiser with no air conditioning. I, I remember being that broke, that down. Here I am working on my book career, launching my book, telling everyone I knew that, hey, I'm a writer now, I'm doing this, go support me, go buy my books. Waking up the next day, having zero sales. Waking up a month from that date, still had zero sales. I had family, I had grandparents. No one bought my book. I will never forget that. No one bought my book. It wasn't just for a month, it was multiple months. It was a whole year, me writing another book no one buying those books i'll never forget those moments those moments were so important because i needed to go through the process of molding that moment was my molding phase hurt the rejection the poverty the struggle telling people that i'm a writer going through the rejection people snickering not believing in what i was doing just that whole process it lasted for a very long time what I like to think about entrepreneurship also, you're going through the molding process. It happens because you're not strong enough in that very moment to hold your dreams. To be able to carry your dream, you have to be able to, ca to carry 100 pounds. At this very moment in your life, you're only able to carry 15 pounds because life wants to give you everything that is earned to you everything every blessing that belongs to you knows that for you to get from here to over here you have to get stronger maybe you being broke is you lifting 10 pounds and now you can carry 25 pounds maybe you dealing with haters or people who don't believe in you that's an extra 25 pounds and all that endurance what it does is it toughens your skin so by the time you get way over here people start talking about you you might run into a problem. It's lightweight. You're already there. You're way strong enough. You're mentally prepared. You can handle the burden of becoming an entrepreneurship. You can handle having a million dollars because you know how it felt to have no money. Built your way up to it. So I don't know. I feel him. Video when I saw it, I was just scrolling on TikTok. It just, 
it reminded me so much of my struggle. I just, it put me back into a place when I was a young 23 year old and I had no air conditioning, broke. McDonald's, when they had the dollar menu, that was my meal. You could afford fries and a chicken sandwich. And that was like a good day for me. I thought I was winning. It's okay, he'll be fine. I'm gonna be rooting for him. That's why you guys need to go support him and follow his TikTok. And if he is doing business stuff or he's running his business or he's selling anything, go support those people. They need it the most. At the bottom, every little bit of appreciation matters because it's like the difference between you quitting and someone saying, oh, I really like what you're doing, thank you. Just getting that one thank you will propel you maybe another five, six months. It happened to me. I would think I was failing, I was doing horrible, then all of a sudden I would get a book sale. Then the person who bought my book would take a video recording of themselves and send it to me. That would be the enough motivation for me to continue writing my next book. Especially when I was at the bottom, it meant the world to me. So just give those people, give entrepreneurs praise. If you know anyone in your family or any of your friends who's like running their own business, all you gotta do is like and share their stuff. If you have some money, go buy whatever they're selling to support them. Those little things matter, especially in the beginning, because once they get to the top, they're going to remember all those people who were there for him, there for you, there for me. You remember that stuff. It always matters. So go support your local entrepreneur.